Thank you for joining me for this presentation on our article on the reliability of electrical cable and optimal design of ocean energy arrays. It's great to be speaking at UTEC 2021 and I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. My name is Matthew Topper. I'm an independent consultant specializing in software development for marine renewable energy applications. Um, if you'd like to check out my website at datarunnygrader.com, um, you could learn a, a few things about the things that I do. So this discussion is about uh, our models of component reliability and how they affect the optimal design of ocean energy arrays. And in particular, this relates to a software that I developed called DT Ocean, which is an ocean energy array techno-economic modeling tool. Um, DT Ocean started as an EU FP7 project in 2013. The first version was released in 2016. And I've been developing it since then in collaboration with uh, Sandia National Labs in the United States. So DT Ocean has a number of advanced features. It can calculate the hydrodynamic interactions between devices, be that wave or tidal, fixed or floating, calculate their power output. It probably has the most advanced balanced plant design of similar tools in this field. It can calculate the, or it can create um, designs of the electrical network and the moorings and foundations by, by component. It has advanced operational simulations, so it can calculate the logistics of operations considering um, weather windows with seasonal variation. It can calculate the downtime of the devices in the array across the lifetime of, of the array. Um, uh, and it uses the uh, designs that it produced for the balance of plant to calculate the reliability of those subsystems which it uses to simulate the failures. Finally, it includes optimization, so it can optimize the array design based on the constraints that we that we choose. And the cost function for that optimization is the levelized cost of energy. I'll just briefly describe levelized cost of energy to you and why it's useful for this. So Aldersey Williams described the levelized cost of energy as the minimum required real energy price for a project. So essentially, if you have some um, internal rate of return, uh, the levelized cost of energy is the lowest price that you could sell your energy in order to break even. So for competitiveness, we clearly want to minimize the levelized cost of energy, but it should be noted that DT Ocean isn't used to compare technologies or to um, validate an LCOE value. We simply use LCOE to drive better ocean energy array designs. And how do we do that? Well, let's have a quick look at the simplified equation for levelized cost of energy. So at the top, we have the discounted costs over the lifetime of the array. At the bottom, we have the discounted energy over the lifetime of the array. And we have a number of factors which contribute to the top and bottom. So looking at the top, we have the number of ocean energy converters, number of devices, the components that are chosen, the logistical times, the operation times, and the vessels that are used in those logistics. And there are other things as well, here's an example. We will note that a number of these factors also contribute to the bottom. So then again, the number of OECs, number of devices, the interactions between them, the downtime of the devices, and that downtime is affected by the vessels that are chosen, the operational times and the component selections. So you can see that it's interesting uh, optimization problem to balance the top and bottom of this, this equation. So let's talk a little bit about the component reliability model in DT Ocean. Um, so for the subsystems that it designs, the balance of plant subsystems, the ET Ocean uh, creates networks of components to represent sub-subsystems and then the higher level subsystems. So if we take a look here on the left hand side, we've got the moorings and foundation subsystem and then that's made up of these smaller sub-subsystems like the umbilical. And that umbilical is made up of one component. These components are represented by square boxes, ID16. And there would be a number of other components in this uh, design, in this network, but they're just not shown here. Otherwise the, um, the, the uh, diagram would be too complicated. So let's look a bit more at this network. We'll see we've got a station keeping sub sub component and that's made up of a number of lines. So these are four lines here and each of those lines again are made up of other sub sub systems like mooring lines and foundation. And then these arrows imply that these sub sub systems should be solved in serial. So each of these would be um, uh, combined in serial. 
this circle implies that they should be combined in parallel. So these four lines are then combined in parallel to give a station keeping value. And then the umbilical and the station keeping are combined in serial again to give the mooring and foundation subsystem value. And we're looking for failure rate here. So we plug failure rates into these components. So if you can imagine all the components here will now have a failure rate applied uh, to, given to them, a fixed failure rate. And then these failure rates combine to produce failure rates for these different sub subsystems. So initially these are solved in serial, the mooring lines and foundations to give the, the values for the lines, which are then solved in parallel to give the value for station keeping. Then the umbilical and the station keeping are combined to give a value for the final moorings and foundation subsystem. So we have a final failure rate for the moorings and foundation subsystem, which is then used by DT Ocean to simulate failures. So when it came to subsea cables, uh, the cable failure rate was treated as as any other component. So you had a cable and it had a failure rate, and that only varied depending on the cable you chose. But recent studies, particularly Warnock, Macmillan et al. 2019, noticed that for subsea cables, particularly in offshore wind applications, actually the failure rate varies depending on the length of cable deployed, which seems a more sensible model. So what we did is we used a uh, adjustment factors or K factors and, and these are that term is normally used for changing a failure rate based on uh, an environment that 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 your component will be in but here we use the length as an adjustment factor or, or, a, K, or a K factor to represent yeah to, to, to represent the environmental impact of the cable length um, so it produces a very sim simple formula um, so the length here we have L we have the failure rate per length, lambda k, which is uh, from this paper. And then we combine those to give a final failure rate for the, for the cable component. So then we conducted an experiment to see what the impact of using these adjustment factors or k factors on the, on the cable was. And for that experiment, we went back to a reference one, reference model one. Um, model, which is a, a, um, a model of a hypothetical tech uh, array of techs in the Tacoma Narrows, part of the Sandia's reference model project. And we've done some simulations of this in, in previous work. Um, as you can see, it's in Northwest USA in uh, Washington State, I guess. So here's Seattle, here's Tacoma. And for these simulations, we uh, optimized arrays of 20 tidal energy converters, and we did four simulations. So one simulation was uh, we optimized the array design with the K factors, another one without. And then we took those optimized array designs and we swapped them over. So we, we did the optimized, uh, we took the optimized array with K factors and ran it without K factors and, and vice versa. So looking at the results now for LCOE, this is in euro per kilowatt hour. We note that actually it didn't make a great deal of difference. So if we look at the optimized arrays with K factors was slightly lower than without. But actually what was interesting, what happened when we swapped them over, we took the fixed array layout and ran it with K factors. Sorry, we took the array layout without K factors and ran it with K factors and, and in fact it got a lower value um, than the optimized array and, and similarly happened when we did it with the array with K factors and ran it without, again, we got a better, better LCOE. But in fact, the error bounds on these, um, these numbers are about, uh, a thousandth. So in fact, these numbers are pretty much the same and, and don't convey a lot of meaning. But what was interesting is we found that actually the array designs changed between the array with K factors and the array without K factors. And what's driving this is you'll notice that on the right hand side for the array with K factors, there are more lines than on the left hand side without. And what's happening is when we don't use the K factors, the, the um, factor that's driving the optimizer is the number of cable connectors. So the cable subsystem is a cable and its connectors. And because the cable doesn't have any cable length doesn't cause any change in reliability, um, when we don't use the K factors, the optimizer just tries to reduce the number of connectors and therefore tries to reduce the number of lines. Whereas on the right hand side where we do have K factors, the cable length is important because if the cable is short enough, even the combined subsystem with the connector and the cable might not have a high enough failure rate to require maintenance over the lifetime of the array. So it can add extra lines without, um, without penalty. And we also noticed that 
improve the um, performance of the optimizer. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, so if we look on the left-hand side, without the K factors, we see that the optimizer required 1,400 evaluations um, and probably didn't perform too well after 600 evaluations. See, it wasn't. It struggled a bit to, to converge. Whereas on the right-hand side, where we see the K factors, we see it was getting very close to convergence around 600 and probably would have finished earlier, except it found some uh, illegal array layout here, which, which required it continue to continue forever. And this kind of makes some sense because now the cable length has become a more important factor in the in the array optimization and therefore the, the optimizer um, can converge quicker. So just to summarize then, DT Ocean was modified to use adjustment factors uh, for cable failure rates based on the cable length. Uh, we conducted an experiment for 20 tidal energy converters um, situated in the Tacoma Narrows, uh, which is the reference model one problem. We didn't see much improvement in LCOE, but we did see that the design envelope for the optimizer probably increased um, and it can use perhaps more cables where it couldn't do before. We certainly saw the optimizer convergence improved, which is uh, which makes sense given that the cable length seems to now have more importance in the optimization problem. And the importance of this, um, or this might become more important for larger arrays where there are longer cables, or perhaps for arrays where the uh, which are situated further offshore that require a, a longer export cable. Well, thanks for listening. I um, hope you enjoyed the talk and you understood something. And um, um, I'm happy to take any questions you may have.